Guinness Draft Stout. Too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. Got a bit of a legend here today. We all know Guinness, don't we? Well, this is the draft stout that they brought out a few years ago in an attempt to try and recreate what they do in the pub, but put it into a can. And they've done this with the aid of what they call a widget, or what is known as a widget. Now, they're, they're not the only ones to do it. John Smith's, I know, done it. And a couple of other brewers have done it. I think Tetley might have done it as well. There's various techni techniques, sorry. It's all to do with the nitrogen, all right? And I'll go into the science in a bit. And hopefully I'll be able to show you what the, what the widget actually looks like. And I'll explain it all. But firstly, let's get on to the Guinness. Of course, does it really need an introduction? Guinness, legendary brewery, going since 1759. Brewed stout since then in Ireland and exported it all over the world. The stuff is legendary. It really does need no introduction. Ireland or the male population of Ireland was basically fueled on this stuff and they've been selling it ever since. It's one of Ireland's biggest exports and it's pretty good stuff. I was, I was introduced to Guinness at a very early age from the old man and he drank this like it was going out of fashion. He was a paddy, and if you look at the Guinness original review that I did, all the info's in there. So watch that, and then watch this, and that'll give you a bit of background. I'm not gonna go into all the stories and everything, but it, it's Guinness, basically. So take from that what you will. Now, what I am gonna do here is try and explain the science behind the, the draft Guinness, the widget, etc. It's pretty simple, all right? You've got a ball in here, and when, when I fill this out, I'll open up the can and I'll show you what's, um, what the ball looks like. It's basically a ball with a hole in it, all right? What happens is, during the canning process, just before it's sealed up, because the top comes off, or the top is off, the beer's put inside, and then this bit round here goes onto the top of the can. Before, just before that's done, they shoot a load of nitrogen into it, whack that on there, and there's your can, all right? Now, <laughs> you see on some reviewers when they open up the beer saying, oh, there's a nice bit of smoke on the opening. Doesn't mean a fucking thing, all right? That is just the atmosphere's equalizing, okay? Because the pressure inside is a lot higher than the pressure out there. And all that is, is the, is the atmosphere equalizing, all right? It gives you no indication of the flavor, doesn't affect the beer whatsoever. Well, it does affect the beer, but I'll go into that in a sec. But it doesn't affect the flavor. It's not the sign of a good beer or a bad beer if you've got smoke on the opening, all right? Don't let that, I don't even know why they bother doing it. It's just a scientific phenomenon. You know, it's completely fucking pointless, basically. So I'm never gonna say, oh, there's a nice bit of smoke on the opening because it doesn't fucking mean anything. Anyway, rant over. Where was I? Oh yeah, they suddenly put the can on and there's, there's different pressure in there, okay? Fair enough, all right? But when you open the can, obviously oxygen will rush in, the atmosphere inside the can or the pressure inside the can will equalize. And what happens is when that nitrogen is shot in there, this ball that's inside has got a little hole, beer will be shot into there due to the pressure from the nitrogen. So effectively, when this is closed, there's a ball containing beer in there, all right? Now, when it, as I said, when this is open, air will rush out. The beer inside the ball will rush out too, just because of the, the vacuum nature of it, and it will agitate all the CO2 that's in here. It's because you've got nitrogen and you've got CO2. There isn't as much CO2 as there is in lager, all right? 
So you don't see widgets in Lager. There's no need, it's packed full of CO2. But there's very little CO2 in here because it's smooth, right? And the nitrogen in there, as I said, when, it come, when, it's, um, when it's opened, that will shoot out, the ball will spin round, it will agitate all the CO2, and it will create a head on there, or it, it will create a nice head when it's poured out. So there's still plenty of CO2, all right? And the CO2 isn't getting absorbed by the beer inside. So that's basically what a widget does. So let's get onto the beer. Four point one percent, four forty mil can. They're doing them in four forty mil cans now. Never used to do that. It was always five hundred. Wonder what? Oh, that's obviously to do with the units, because of the government guidelines on the units. And this is brewed in Park Royal. I thought that had gone. Park Royal is in London, and they brewed Guinness there for years. There was a Guinness brewery. It's based in Northwest London, Park Royal, and. Yeah, they brewed it there for years, and I thought it had closed down, but it says Park Royal. St. James's Gate, Dublin 8, distri distributed by Guinness & Co, Park Royal. Right, okay, so it's probably not a brewery, it's just a, a depot there. I'm pretty sure they're not brewing it there. It could be contract brewed somewhere else. Anyway, let's get this beer opened up. Right, just before I open this up, I want you to listen to the sound. I'll open it quite near the mic. Beer that's got the widgets in it, it does make a different sound because there's a lot more nitrogen content in there. All right, I just want you to hear this. You've probably all heard it anyway, but I'm gonna do it anyway. All right, it makes quite a... All right, okay, what you heard there, it was, it was the CO2 being agitated due to the nitrogen rushing out of the widget, okay? So I'm gonna pour this out into the glass, into the glass, yeah. I should have got the um, scientist bow tie on. Well, I have to say, yeah, look, there's your, well, I have to say, that's a pretty fucking pathetic attempt ahead. Oh, no, it's not. It will probably settle and create one, right? I do apologize. Now, I'm gonna let that settle, and I've got one of these things. These are called a go swing. Um, I wouldn't um, recommend, I've just tried to open my stepdaughter's um, can of fuck, fuck knows what. It, it looked like it was radioactive and I completely drowned her with it. But I'm just going to open this up with it. All right, so you just twist that around. That is gone. I don't know. Yeah, I had this problem before. I'll tell you what, these things are about a fiver on eBay. And I thought it was going to be a really good thing to... get this open but obviously I'm neither doing it wrong or this is a massive pile of bollocky dog wank hang on okay so the caps off Right, this is gonna be a bit messy. I'll try and make it. That's what it does, it takes the cap off like that. And if you can see in there, there's the cap and there's the ball. I am gonna empty this out and dry this off. In your draft can of Guinness, that is what you get. It is a round, almost like a table tennis. But can you see in the bottom of there, there's beer, all right? That's forced in there from the nitrogen. There's the holes there, they're very small holes. I don't know whether the camera's gonna pick that up or not because of the light. But yeah, there's the hole there. This is where that beer will escape from. And agitate the CO2 that's already in the can. There you go, that's that's opened up. There. Oh, fuck. That's one of them go swings. All right. I'm not sure whether I, I'm doing it wrong or they're a pile of shit. 
I may do another review on these, but so far I'm not impressed. It, if that was full, that would go everywhere. Anyway, this is settled down now, and that's what it looks like. It smells like Guinness, funny enough. Let's get it down the hatch. Yeah, would you believe that tastes like Guinness? I have to say, if you're used to your imperial stouts, your craft stouts, your pastry stouts, this don't half seem bland, but it is a really good session beer. Super smooth, I have to say. But what I have noticed, I'd get an absolutely raging headache from Draft Guinness. And I stopped, I used to drink it quite a bit. <laughs> a funny story. I remember I said, uh, I invited in my old place in Tottenham. No, it was Wood Green actually, it was when, when I lived in Wood Green. I invited a load of mates over. I said, come over the weekend, I'm having a barbecue. A load of them turned up. I had three bags of Dorito and two cases of Guinness. And that was me barbecue. There was absolutely no fucking barbecue involved. We all got out of our nap. Neighbours complained, we had the music blaring. We were basically the neighbours from hell. I blame the bag of Doritos. But, that's by the by. Guinness is Guinness. And as I said on the other review, if you haven't tasted it, then you really should. If you're watching this, I'm sure you've tasted it. You have to. But if you haven't, you need to taste it. Try it out of can, or try it on draft. But taste it. You need to. If you haven't tasted it, then you're missing out, I think. But yeah, it's it, it's the go-to stout. And it's the go-to in a pub that you're not sure of the, the ales. Or the ales off, then Guinness is always your default. Last word on it. Uh, the difference between cold Guinness and normal Guinness. They both come from the same keg all right there's no separate keg for cold guinness and original guinness if you get the two you don't get it so much now but you used to get the two in a pub you get normal guinness and you get the cold they come from the same keg they go up different lines there's an attachment on the line for cold guinness and that freezes the guinness as it's coming up the pipe all right i don't know what it is i don't know whether it's liquid nitrogen or what but it just makes the git it just makes the Guinness really cold as it's coming up, up the pipe and out into the um, into the glass. They put a sparkler on sometimes on the on the tap as well to give it a nice head and all that. But yeah, I'm not really a fan of them sparklers either, to be honest. But there it is in the you know Guinness. Guinness is Guinness. So what's the verdict on Guinness? Well, Guinness is Guinness. I know I keep saying it, but if, you, if you're watching this and you haven't tasted it, then go, go out today and get some either in a can or if there's a pub near you, even better, support the pub and try some because it is a lovely pint. Now, you can knock it and say, oh, it's a macro brewed stout. It is. But I'll tell you something, you know, if you're on it all day, as I have been quite a few times and I've drank this all day. It's been great, you know? You won't go wrong with it. It's super easy drinking, it's very smooth. People say it's heavy. It's heavier than lager, but I wouldn't class it as a particularly heavy drink. Um, I noticed I did get a headache from the canned stuff. I'm not sure whether that's to do with the, what's the name, the, uh, the nitrogen content in here, but whether it is or whether it isn't, I don't really know and uh, yeah the, the main point of this review was to just explain the widget technology which is still being used by Guinness now and uh, hopefully that's cleared it up if you've got any questions leave them in the comments please like and subscribe usual caper because I need every damn subscriber I can get so as I don't look like I'm a silly fucking useless bastard and my pathetic existence will be rubber stamped so there you go 
That is Guinness. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>